Hello and welcome back to XCOM 2 Long War of the Chosen. My name is Saik and we're playing Legendary Iron Man difficulty and I invite you to join me with Operation Starving Key. We're in month number 7. It um, is the same old, same old. We're fighting for North and South America. This one here is a special mission though because it starts the liberation in the region. The squad that we have for this mission um, is pretty rookie-ish. So two squaddies, corporal sergeant and a lieutenant. And I am a bit afraid about the baseline, uh, to be honest. If we were to boost the infiltration, we could get it down though. So boosting the infiltration now would essentially uh, mean that the overall uh, reward for this mission is minus 10 intel, which would suck but we would start the liberation of the region. I'm not 100% sure if we can take 15 enemies because these soldiers here are relatively rookie-ish and the problem is we're um, uh, trying to recover an item from the Advent Vault which is usually, if I'm not mistaken, a 9 turn mission. So that's a problem in itself. The eight hour hours of further infiltration will not make a huge difference, so I am thinking that I'm spending the extra um, the extra credits here, and we're getting it down to extremely light. I really want to start the liberation, and I don't want kind of a mission that is not working out. So sometimes you gotta bite the bullet and just make sure that you do it for the greater good. Good, we just started uh, the mission. Let's take a look. So that's the classical start of this kind of canal uh, sort of map. And like I, like I was imagining, it was a nine turn mission. It's always a nine turn mission for, for, those, um, for those recovery items. Rolling. Let's use our Shinobi and see what we're dealing with. Apparently nothing, which is interesting. Go, go, go. Let's move in and Running. make sure that we have really nice positions. Good. Very solid double move. Let's continue this and Good copy. essentially use this round in order to to get everyone in position. Heading there now. I have eyes on the enemy. All right, that's two out of potentially seven to nine. Moving over here. Nothing. Okay. Affirmative. Location confirmed. Good. We're continuing to move in. I like how fast and aggressive we pushed. It's definitely the right choice. First round after we are being revealed, we need to immediately start the evac flare. I'm hearing a mech. And that's a pretty strong pack here. One that we can deal with, though. That's affirmative. They're on to us. I'm okay with being spotted, and it's not a problem here. All right, 
first things first. We already talked about it. That's the evac flare. Let's soften up the longbow. Well, that's a really shitty softening up. We know there's another pack right over there. Move over here and then take a shot. Problem is, this guy has a lot of hit points. Moving up. I mean, one of the things that we can do is we could free him up uh, so that he can be attacked from both sides, making it easier for our shinobi to attack. Wow, we did we just remove our own cover? This is so stupid. Sure Alright, this could be a kill because we have blue screen rounds. Very nice. Only the best. Good, so that's going to shred him and hopefully deal at least four or five points of damage. Uh, that's the absolute minimum. Could have been a bit more. to take some damage. I was hoping that the wall would open, that way I could have attacked from the other side. Yeah, and we're now being flanked by the Grenadier Captain. Wouldn't be surprised if they take a shot. Yeah, that's a flanking shot. Well, not as bad as I would have imagined it would be. Moving to designated coordinates. We could flashbang. Let's see, that's four out of nine. Flashbang is probably not needed. Incredibly beefy packs, uh, though. I mean. They all have 20 plus hit points.
Yeah, we need to flank them. Everything else would not work out. How far can we charge? Well, that's the only guy who, whom we could reach. Moving on target location. Trying to not pull anything else. Yeah, but twenty. Uh, but eighty-two percent is not high enough. So I'm hoping that I'm not pulling another pack, which of course is not the case. Sector plus a viper. Okay, fair enough. Can kill the sector. Definitely can kill the sector. That's six overall. Run and gun over here, take a shot. Let's first and foremost start with the gren Grenadier. Wow, our damage sucks. Flashbanging both of them in anticipation that we can't kill them right away. Which, if you think about it, is really sad. Deflection. We're quite literally flanking them. Understood. And this guy takes three magnetic weapon shots and is probably not even down. Okay, three if we were to hit, we of course not hitting. Sector is most likely going to mind control. I'm wondering what the best course of action would look like. Can't go through here. Move all the way over here and take a shot, but that would be at this at at this guy. And we have like what two, four, six enemies so far. Which means there's at least one more pack, probably a triplet. You know what I'm going to do? Completely different plan here. Just minimizing the damage. Everyone's in full cover. There's heavy fire in this zone. I knew that we would be flanked. The panic will go away, end of the turn. Mind you, he is... Um, he is blinded, so disoriented, and we're in full cover. Yet he simply refuses to miss. This might pull another pack. Double alarm core, perfect. Okay, we can aid protocol and make sure that we're okay with the shinobi. That's fine. Okay, that would work. Not a problem. 
All right, might even kill it. Not quite, but very, very close to actually killing it. Um, this here would hopefully get rid of him. Of course it won't. This here would be flanking. This here is full cover, but we're flanking the Viper, which is exactly the angle that I was looking for. Good, Viper down. Which gives us now the option to aid protocol, making his uh, the Shinobi's cover full and still having a shot into the open without cover. Come on, let's kill. Very nice, okay. Perfect. Four more enemies to go. Oh, well, those guys are tough. Confirm. Moving over to flank. All right, that's definitely in kill range. can probably not kill him right away, but we could at least try to injure him. Our cover is gone, so we need to reposition. Moving into full cover over here. Continue being aggressive. There's a purifier. I'm not afraid of the purifier, but I am afraid of the other um, advent. So we got to be a bit careful. Move all the way up to here and basically shotgun to the face. We only got seven hit points. I don't like that. So instead, we're going for full cover flank. Let's go. Let's go, baby. Good job. He will need to move, which means we're overwatching. It's probably going to be a hit. We're immune to his attacks. Shit, oh, which didn't work. Oh, wow, he like man moded this. 
This is Firebrand. It's time to go. All right, we can kill him with a nice little crit. Moving over here for another flanking shot. Twenty-five hit points. Holy shit. Okay, we gotta deal with this guy. Twenty-two percent. Why is it so low? See, that's the problem with endgame units. Again, I I don't want to always hate on the game design, but just um, adding like new abilities that cumulatively add to cover. It really doesn't make any sense. This guy here has 18 on top of it, which means he's in half cover even if he's not in cover at all. And that's just going to grow more and more and more. So that shooting him into cover is not even an option anymore. Good, we're suppressing him. Could attack him, but we don't have... Ah, we don't have... Blade Storm, which is a problem. Killing ourselves. So hopefully not going to deal 11 points of damage. Perfect, we stunned him. Oh, that's very good. Which means we're not taking any damage. Moving over here. And Overwatch, just in case the reinforcements are coming in. So what's a good place to actually see the hack? It's probably moving all the way over here. Okay, we're getting pretty decent loot on top of it. Lots, of, lots and lots of PCSs. So I'm moving just in case um, it's necessary I can move in and take the chest next turn. Keep the pressure 
All right, he's moving back to the pack, which we're probably going to trigger now. Yeah. Good. Moving in. We're near the objective. Hacking the chest. Yep, I like the extra supplies. That's good. Time to deal with the reinforcements. Oh, nice. 20. That was good. Eight per eight percent, <sighs> guys. This is exactly what I meant. Lone Wolf ten percent, Dodge thirteen percent, Low Profile fifteen percent, Defense fifteen percent. That's fifteen, thirty, forty-five, uh, forty-three, fifty-three percent. So this guy, and we're not looking at low cover here. This guy here has fifty-three percent negative just to hit him which is completely ridiculous if you think about it Let's suppress him at least. We have zero chance hitting him anyways. Roger that. And to make sure that no one of our beloved operatives dies, we're using our last grenade. Fifty-three percent negatives. Gotta think about that. Like fifty-three. What in the world? This is a Matrix-like uh, scene where Neo is just slowing down time. Okay, we gotta get the f out of here. Eighty-one percent, good enough for me. That won't do it. Oh, he had evasion on top of it as well. Well, that's great. Good for him. Absolutely. Standing right next to him. Moving, reload, and we're overwatching in a second. Moving to designated position. I'm ready. We got to get out of here. The reinforcements will just be piling up.
All right, Overwatch, Overwatch, and Overwatch. Pretty dangerous uh, enemies now. Alright, anyone with the option? Nope, none of our soldiers has the option to just not trigger overwatches, which means we will try our best just to get out of here. Good, we should be far enough away for them to even reach us or see us. And next turn we're just going to get out of here. I'm happy that I spent the intel, because this mission in itself was rough. More of them coming in. They gave us a good run for our money. If you think that there is, uh, that there would be theoretically even more enemies here, that would be brutal. Yeah, I can definitely see kind of the difficulty jump with the elite units coming in 20 plus, 20 plus um, hit points a pop, and then with game design features like minus 53 to hit. Of course, uh, then it is going to be difficult. I mean, don't get me wrong, I don't mind having defense as a value on enemies. On Archons it sort of makes sense, and on other enemies that can't take cover. But if you do it on enemies that can take cover, uh, essentially you're double, uh, double dipping, and they do have values that are unobtainable by any stretch of the imagination um, for our um, operators. So that's a bit odd, I would say. We got four promotions though. So for the rookie team, it was quite helpful. I really like what I was seeing. And I think we're just going to give her the standard loadout, um, which would be competitive um, as a starter. All right, for him, we had trench gun and uh, slug shot. Slug shot, by the way, really bad ability in my perspective, not worth it. The trench gun has its, um, has its ups, upsides. I like fortify. I like Fortify, but since we haven't had Close and Personal, which is giving plus 30 crit chance, which is extremely helpful, that might be a thing. But I guess Fortify is just better, so even for him I would go with Fortify. Yeah, I think that was the right decision. And you can then argue... that you're just um, using specific ammunition in order to increase the crit chance and an elite um, laser uh, scope. Okay. For her, it's pretty straightforward. I think we're going for Blade Storm here. I like Shredder. Something to consider, to be honest. 
because sometimes we require an additional shredding. Yeah, and the only other thing that she needs is combat fitness. I mean, the rapid deployment plus uh, the explosive grenades aren't bad, but that's just simply not in her loadout. I am somewhat reluctant to give uh, to waste an, a loadout slot for a grenade. Would be something different if she already had a grenade, like flashbang grenade and then rapid uh, deployment. Then, of course, it would be great. Good. This is going to be just the standard um, specialist. We have enough uh, special snowflakes. Don't need an additional one. And I'm wondering if it would be a good time to essentially start this here. Get the enemy activity down one more notch, and once it's at 175. We should be good to go. So, who else requires training? I like the lead by example. We're going to go with that again. There we go. Network tower is ready. And we are still at 13 to 15. Probably, the, um, I'm not sure, I thought it would be 125, 150, 175, and 200. I might have been wrong, and it is only 125, 150, and 200 as additional milestones to reduce the enemy activity. Clearly, it hasn't changed, but I think we can deal with 15 enemies. That's not the problem. So, we're going to do that in the next run, because I want the soldiers to be ready once we're going for the actual kingpin, which is the warlock. Uh, that's going to be our nemesis uh, this month. We're definitely going to go for him. Um, so yeah, uh, which brings us to the end of uh, today's session. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the content, feel free to leave a comment or a like down below. I would appreciate that. And we're going to see each other in the next episode. Bye-bye.